demands strips at Western Wall in protest of Israeli modesty bill. On February 12th, an Israeli woman was arrested after conducting a protest where she stripped down to a bathing suit at the Western Wall in response to a bill proposed by the ultra-Orthodox Shas party that would criminalize, quote-unquote, immodesty at the holy site. According to reports, the woman removed her clothing after entering the women's section of the Western Wall with only her two-piece swimsuit and sneakers remaining. The, the police arrested the woman and took her to a nearby police station for questioning. If found guilty, the woman could be imprisoned for up to three years uh, for an insult to religion charge. Although the proposed bill was quickly withdrawn due to fierce criticism, similar proposals are uh, likely to appear again as Israel elected its most right-wing government in recent history. This was in response, I think, to a law that they were suggesting to make it so that any insults to religion at the wall, including just women, for example, going to the men's section or just going to the men's section with that, the, kip the kippa, what is that called? Kippa. 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 Um, should get you arrested or fined. Mm -hmm. So guys, they're, they're, this is the lunacy. Like this is what we're dealing with right now. The, the current government the current coalition in israel is going full-on yahtzee okay these are you know this is this is they're they're, uh, they're anti-free speech anti-secularism anti-gay rights anti-woman rights anti-trans rights and most important of all anti the separations of power between the branches of government mm -hmm. so basically they are destroying what we consider the one of the most fundamental characteristics of a liberal democracy. I don't know if people understand that liberal democracy is what makes democracy good. Absolute democracy is horrible. Liberal democracy, liberalism and democracy are at, are at, at odds with each other. Right. So people think that just because democracy is good, you should you need to have maximum democracy. Maximum democracy is a bad thing. This is why, because people are not educated about the limitations of democracy that is needed. They think, well, we like democracy and these right leaning conservative religious nut jobs are going around like, well, don't you like democracy? Well, these courts are stopping us from enforcing the will of the people. So we need to reduce the power of the court. But they don't understand the court is exactly what makes a democracy, a liberal democracy, because there's certain things that should not be up to the majority's decision. That what makes a democracy a liberal one, because the, lim the liberal part of the uh, the liberal part of a liberal democracy limits the democratic element of a liberal democracy, because it limits what the majority can do. It limits the the uh, what the majority could enforce upon minorities. Because a liberal democracy makes it so that the majority cannot take their away the rights of minorities, such as gay people, such as trans people, such as ethnic minorities. For example, Arabs in a majority Jewish country. And once you take away the power of the court, this is what Montesquieu realized, that when you want to have an effective government, you need to make sure that the power is not centralized in one of the branches of the government. That's why you separate the powers so that you have decentralized the power between the judiciary, the executive, and the legislative. And now in Israel, these people are going out with the propaganda of like, hey, you want democracy? Well, the legislative branch is the democratic element of the government and you voted us in and these courts are stopping us from enforcing a rule. So they wanted to make it, they were passing laws so that they could make, they could bypass the laws. They could, the, 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 the Knesset, which is the, which is the parliament in Israel, they saying that if we have like 51% vote, the courts cannot stop us. Even if it's illegal, this law has to be passed. Which if that happens, that means the end of liberal democracy in Israel. That means all these right-leaning laws, all these religious laws, there's no limitations to it. And unfortunately, Israel doesn't have a constitution. 
it has something similar to a constitution but not a constitution so there's no hard there's no it's possible for them to be able to do this that would be the only successful democracy in the middle east the only successful democracy in the middle east would no longer be successful because it wouldn't be a liberal democracy anymore we we the the only true secular liberal democracy both secularism and liberalism is is being challenged in the middle in the only successful part of the middle east and you know how this is devastating not just for israel but for the planet for the middle east and for the rest of the world do you have any idea how much the politics of israel is influential on one of the most important countries on this planet which is the united states and on every other country in the middle east this is devastating this is horrible by the way on that i want to say something i i I had a show on the Atheist Republic Persian. Um, we, so the atheists of Iran and the atheists of Middle East, what I'm trying to do is to try to create a bridge between us because now we're suffer- both of us are suffering from the influence of religion on politics. You know, I know Iran is suffering a lot more, but st- at least we have something that we could relate, right? So if you go to Atheist Republic Persian, I tried to. I brought in an atheist um, Israeli to tell people about all these horrible things that are happening in Israel. So for Iranians to see that atheist Iranians could see that we have things in common with Israeli atheists, right? So if you go to Jomhuria Bichodayan, which is our atheist channel, if you go to the live section, you can see this show. This one we brought in, and people were asking questions, like Iranians were asking in Persian, and he was speaking in English, and I was acting as a translator. So we were trying to create a bond between secular uh, Israelis and secular Iranians, which is pretty good. So yeah, this was. This is right. And you also interviewed an Israeli atheist activist on the English channel too. Yes, I did that too. Yeah, on this channel too. Yeah. So if you go, guys, go to our live, you should be able to see that as well. Live section. Hold on. Hara Sultan is saying, imagine atheists of Iran and atheists of Israel ending this conflict. We actually can, because once you remove religion, there's no dispute. <laughs> or like well, a large dispute. amount of it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is another show I did on our Persian and our English channel. I brought an um, uh, Israeli atheist telling us about the nightmares that are happening. Wait, so click on it and give us the title so people can see. Let's oh. promote it properly okay so this one is called israel's new far-right government a threat to secularism and democracy it was a good show guys make sure to check this out i got scared so that's how you know it was a good show i was like oh no we're so fucked i'm so scared (laughs) yeah yeah Sasan is saying, I saw the show today. It was great. Who knew that there were multiple Qurans? I also saw the Israeli interview. It was great. Thank you for all the hard work, Armin. Aw, thank you. Armin (laughs) has, guys, Armin has been doing so much hard work on the Persian channel lately that you don't see over here. So I want to really make sure we give him lots of credit and recognition for that because he's doing a super good job. I'm proud of him. Um. And what I love this comment, one eyed heathen is going, there goes Armin, defender of nuance, advocating for separation of powers. And I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was yeah. like, oh my God, Armin's going off. Let me sit back. I feel like I'm taking a civics course right now. Just let him do his thing. <laughs> no, but I, honestly, like in Israel, this is the, the lack of understanding of what makes a democracy works is one reason, one of the reasons why these. Uh, this right-leaning government is their propaganda is working because think about the narrative the, the narrative is so they're very effective with this narrative like hey we're actually people are the far right people in israel they're saying like they are this is their narrative they're like they're accusing us of being anti-democracy but we're actually for democracy because you voted us in and we're trying to pass the laws that you ask for and the court is saying no so who is them being democratic here? We being we are being democratic here, and the court is stopping us. So people are like, yeah, that's right. Actually, isn't pro democracy? Isn't pro democracy? Doesn't that mean that the people's will should be passing? 
So yeah, maybe it makes sense to re reduce the power of the court because that would be pro-democratic. This happens when you have an educated people about okay, democracy being good, that doesn't mean you want maximum democracy. This is why people don't understand a liberal democracy is a, de is a democracy where the democratic element of the democracy has been limited to in favor of individual rights. That's what liberalism means. It means you have the limitations are individual rights that are non-negotiable. And the, the, for example, the majority cannot come say like, hey, let's bring back slavery. Like, even if 100 people percent of the people vote for that that would be like in the constitution or like nope okay gossam john is saying that we need more susie on the farsi channel yes can you come back that would be great yeah what do you want to talk about about your you know part, your take on the protests and your activism and what your takes have been that would be great. Ooh, that could be yeah good. you yeah, you could have come with pictures and stuff like that to show us. Yeah, that would be good. All I'm right. Armin. I think I found some people that I'm going to celebrate Nuru's with. Oh, nice. I'm very excited because well, I've never I've never done Nuru's. Take pictures. We will have we will show that on the show as well. Exactly. Our Persian community is going to freak out. <laughs> I'm so excited. All right, let's move Let on. Let me to get the a little half scene. I'll, I'll bring some kuwe kaka. Like it'll be great. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese god, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.